And earlier we talked a little bit about, um, you were saying that the views on the competitive market have changed a little bit in Texas, you know, post the storm. There's been a lot of conversation about, like, is a competitive market, electricity market, the best thing for Texas? Should we do something that adds more capacity or should we stick with what we have and maybe add in some guardrails? And so I wanted to go to you, uh, Becky, and talk a little bit about that because, you know, do you think that this is going to, like, fundamentally change the competitive market in Texas or do you think that we can continue on this path in the current market structure that we have with maybe some additional stabilizing or some sort of um, some sort of other measures that we can put into place here. Yeah, I, <clears throat> of course I have an implicit bias, right? <laughs> the deregulated market is a big part of my resume, but um, I, I really believe that uh, the competitive market is here to stay. And one of the sentinel signals um, that I get of why that reaffirms my opinion is that if you look at the um, legislation that's coming out right now or being contemplated and being uh, debated over the last few months, there is nothing that is, well, there are a couple of bills that will ult ultimately restructure our market, uh, like make it more of a capacity market, but you know, they're not moving. And so the bills that are moving are um, not related to a fundamental restructuring of a market. Now, I do think there's an opportunity in the summer to do a good study on what are some resource adequacy standards and models for resource ad adequacy standards that maybe we can incorporate into our market and that align well with our competitive structure, um, which is, you know, 70 cent, 70 cent, 70% competitive and 30% um, non-competitive. So um, there's answers out there to make it more robust. I think at the end of the day, we're going to have a competitive market that will be over a course of time more robust than it was before. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that we're just on the very advent, the, the nascent stage of how yours and my um, relationship with our energy and electricity is going to be changing over a course of time. You know, it's going to be kind of like how our relationship with our telephone has changed drastically. Um, I think we're kind of at the beginning stages of something similar. And so what do you see like 20 years from now, our relationship with our electricity provider how that would shift. Yeah, you know, just like our cell phones, we're a lot more in control. You know, we could switch easily, we can turn our data on and off, we can augment it, we could um, hop to different uh, providers, change out our, our cell phones a lot easier. Um, and also, um, we seem to be immune to how expensive it is every month. And so I wouldn't be surprised if our electricity bill gets more and more expensive for a variety of reasons. Um, at least for a while, but it's going to have a lot more bells and whistles to come with it as well. Mm -hmm. I think Moore's Law holds true with, with a lot of the stuff um, that we're trying to build in terms of technology. So, you know, solar panels have exponentially be becoming uh, cheaper. Mm -hmm. They're becoming more um, efficient in terms of how much electricity they can generate. Uh, and batteries are the same thing. I mean, I've, I'm shocked on how fast uh, battery technologies are coming. Not really the, the lithium ion phosphate stuff that, that's inside the batteries, but what we can actually do mm -hmm. with the batteries is, is absolutely uh, astonishing. So, you know, for example, we have uh, systems now that, um, you know, customers are, we're taking them essentially off the grid uh, where, you know, batteries will, they're controlling the power of the home now. So they're interacting with, the home's usage, they're interacting with the solar system's production, uh, and they're managing all of that inside of the actual battery's uh, motherboard. So um, technologies like that becoming, um, the pace that they're becoming uh, more capable of doing uh, these small interactions where the customer really doesn't have to think uh, is particularly exciting for me. You mentioned 20 years. I think you know we'll probably be installing these generation systems um, in customers' homes, and and that'll be it. So uh, the big thing um, I, I don't think we've touched on this is you know the the amount of stranded costs and the seemingly ever rising TDSP costs 
uh, that we're having to pay for, you know, just by maintaining the grid is, is a little bit variable, but it's also increasing. And so that's where it becomes very exciting to me is, you know, I think energy itself will become very cheap, uh, but the, the amount of money that it will cost to actually transport it to point A to point B uh, will become very expensive. And so uh, by decentralizing uh, our grid and using it in a very smart way uh, will, will help us you know, into the future.